Good morning and welcome to Light for Life Ministries. Glad that you've joined us today. And, you know, we're just looking forward to what the Lord has for you and for us. And uh, He's so good. You know, He's always got good things planned for us. We want to pray for you right now. And if you have some needs, as I often do, just, uh, if you will, just lift your hand right where you're at and let that uplifted hand represent that need. You know, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. God knows what you need and God loves you. And God wants to provide your every need according to his riches and glory. And he works all things together for your good. So uh, let's just pray and believe. Lord, in Jesus name, we know that you love us and that you care and that you've invited us to come into your throne room and to seek your face and that lord if we'd seek you we'd find you if we would knock the door would be opened and so lord right now we bring these requests these needs before you and we say lord you are good and uh, we supplicate you and with thanksgiving we just thank you right now for paying attention to these things and taking care of them we lay them in your lap and Lord, we trust you to show us what we may need to do in the process, uh, the steps that we need to take. And we trust you, Lord, to provide every single need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. We're going to trust God to do that for you and uh, with you. I'm Rod Buzzard, and uh, I, I'm, I'm here just to share a thought with you. Uh, we had a message Sunday morning. It was called Moving On in Christ. Uh, we go down to the park, do an outreach, and we got, oh, a couple dozen people that are, are, are coming around now and, uh, and share in worship and praise and then share in the Word of God. And uh, we were just talking the other morning about how important it is to move on in Christ. We come to Christ. And then we need to move on in Christ and begin to grow in Christ. I was reminded of the story of the parable of the uh, prodigal son and how he left his father demanding his wealth. And we know the story. He wasted everything, came to himself, and then he came back to the father's house. And in that story, I was just reminded of three important points. One, that God will let us do whatever we want to do, good or bad. We have a free will. And he, he's going to let us go our own way. Uh, some, some people think, yeah, well, that's God's blessing. You know, actually, that's God's wrath. He separates himself from us and says, go ahead and do what you want to do. But he lifts his hand of protection and blessing off of us. And, uh, and boy, we're, we're just out there fending for ourselves. And that's what happened to the prodigal son. So, you know, we, we need to know that God is going to let us do whatever we want to do, for good or for bad. But number two, that God will forgive us and receive us back no matter what we've done when we do come to ourselves and realize that we need him and that we want him and, and we turn to him. You see, God only wants those who are willing servants, those who are willingly serving in his kingdom, willingly living for him and with him, who are willing worshipers. He, he doesn't want, to, want somebody, you know, that is forced into it. He wants somebody who wants that. And so uh, God, God is just waiting. He loves us so much. He, he only lets us go with the hope that we will come to ourselves and come back to him. And so I just want to encourage you, no matter what you may have done, no matter where you may be, no matter what's going on in your life, God loves you and he wants to bring you back to himself. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible says that God has a plan for us that is for good and not for evil. He said that to uh, Israel as they were being captive, carried captive into uh, uh, Iraq or, or old Babylonia by Nebuchadnezzar. And so God was saying to them, look, you're going to go into captivity. You're being carried away in a place you don't want to be. Uh, you're under my judgment, but I want you to know that my plan for you is for good and not for harm, and that I'm going to be with you even in, in this time. You know, we need to know that God loves us, and his plan for us is always for good and not for the harm. Whatever 
that plan may be and uh, and wherever we may find ourselves and that what God is really wanting to do is is to bring us to himself so that we can really experience his love and uh, and the life the abundant life that he has for you and for me and so uh, let me just encourage you and remind you that God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to die for our sins and and that means you God so loved you that he sent Jesus to die for your sins and and he said now if you will come to me I'll not only give you everlasting life but Jesus and, and not perish but Jesus said he wanted to give us a life more abundantly and uh, and that God has the best for you and uh, you know that what God wants to do for you and in you and through you is for the good I think of people like Daniel who woke up in captivity but God worked in the life of Daniel and raised him up until he became the the second most powerful man in the land I think of people like Queen Esther who woke up in a slave girl and uh, and and was forced in slavery into a pageant and forced to marry the Emperor but but became the deliverer of, of her people God has a good plan for you and and he wants to do something in you and through you and so even if it's if it means that we've ended up in a place that we don't understand we don't know what God's doing we can't see it just hang in there God's plan for you is not for harm but for the good and that we see then that when when the prodigal came home that the son came under the ways of the father and his house so number three we, we just have to understand okay we come back to the Lord but we don't just keep doing the same old thing we're coming into his house and now there are things that that he wants us to do and there are ways that he wants us to do it and so he begins working in our lives now God's patient with us he knows that he has to teach us develop us he takes things one at a time he sees where we're at he knows you know what 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 we can do and what we can't do and and how we can respond and and it is a growth process uh, but but still we have to understand that God is going to begin to work in our lives and begin changing us you know and and so he receives us back but he begins changing us and so we need to understand that we have to move on in Christ move forward so uh, God wants us to to see that happening now in all of that though we have to embrace the love of God I think of Job Job who uh, had been on the top of the world and uh, and literally the richest man in the world and had everything at his fingertips and then in, in just a matter of uh, uh, just a few days it was all stripped from him and he went from wealthiness to poverty and he lost all of his children and then finally Satan said to God if I can take his health he'll curse you and uh, and the Bible says that Job's or, or God said go ahead and and uh, and and Job woke up with boils all over his body sick uh, not dying but just so sick he was in constant horrific pain and yet in all of that Job said shall we not accept evil from God and as well as good and uh, he said naked came I into this world and naked shall I return blessed be the name of the Lord he would not curse God and and he, he even stood up when there were those that were accusing him of being sinful and having done something wrong and actually you know Job in, in the in the sense of just his lifestyle was living a good lifestyle and uh, and and wasn't doing anything sinful or wrong and and he said you know I, I don't understand all of that all I know is that I shall see my Redeemer in the flesh and he, he spoke of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and of his own personal resurrection that he he knew that God was still on the throne that God still loved him and that God was going to save him and deliver him out of that situation whether through healing or through death that God was going to deliver him you know what Job was doing he was embracing the love of God he he believed with all of his heart that God really loved 
him. And, and in that love, he believed that God had a plan for him and that it was not for evil, it was for good, and that the end of the story was going to be that he would be with the Lord forever in heaven in a resurrected body. And he was hanging on to that truth. He was believing God in the middle of all of that. He embraced the love of God. You know, I, I don't know where maybe you are today. Uh, maybe you're like Job and you're suffering. Maybe you're down and out. Maybe you're like the prodigal and you're there because of choices you made. And maybe you're like Job and you really have been making all the right choices and doing the right thing and you still ended up there. And, and you know, we, we don't understand why it happens that way sometimes. And yet we do know that God is good and that whatever God permits is for the good. It's not for harm. It's not for evil. It is for the good. And, and, uh, and if you're there, I just want to encourage you, embrace the love of God. Embrace Him. I can remember when I was going through cancer and, and, uh, and at that time in my life I was pastoring a church and trying to live as good as I knew how to live uh, for the Lord and, and raise my children and be a good witness and testimony. And then all of a sudden I was sick, literally unto death, and suffering greatly. And, you know, the temptation was to think, wow, you know, I've served God and this is what I get. But, you know, I knew that God still loved me. I knew that God still had a plan for me. And, uh, and, and you know, I knew that if I died from the cancer, I was going to be with him forever. I had real peace in that. And I knew if I didn't, that God was going to use all of those things for his glory. And he did. He taught me some important lessons during that time. Made me more sensitive to the pain and suffering of other people. And, and, uh, and gave me a testimony through the test. And, you know, that's what God does. So, you know, we, we just have to embrace the love of God. We have to know that He is on the throne. We have to know that He does love us and that He is using these things for His glory and for our good. So, I, I just really encourage us uh, that, we, that we see what God is doing. Psalms 147 verse 1 is the passage that we looked at this week. And uh, in these three verses, I saw some really incredible things. 147 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcast of Israel, and He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. You know, this is what God does. He gathers together the outcast. Maybe you feel like you're outcast right now. Um, and why do we get that way? Why do we get broken hearted? Why do we become outcast? You know, there can be a lot of reasons for it. Um, one of the reasons for having a, a broken heart is that we've been hurt. And, uh, and, and that pain and that hurt, you know, has broken us in heart. And then we become defensive and then we become uh, isolating. We don't want to be around people because we're afraid we're going to be hurt again. Another reason is we get proud and, uh, and, and we don't want to admit we're wrong. And so, you know, we cut ourselves off and, you know, we're, we're just, we just put up all our defenses and push people away. And then another reason is, is we're born in sin. We're just born that way. We're born sinful. We're born uh, and shapen in human nature, which is a sinful nature. You know, I never had to teach my children to disobey me. <laughs> and, you know, I've got good kids. They're wonderful kids. But, you know, the, the, the disobedience was never anything I had to teach them. That came natural. Obedience is what I had to teach them. And uh, And the same thing is true of all of us. We all have that sin nature, children of wrath, born separated from God with that sin nature. And the thing that we want to do, we don't do. And the thing that we don't want to do, we do. Paul talked about that. So how do we get past this being broken hearted? How do we get past uh, this this problem of being an outcast how do we find that healing that jesus talked about where he said he was he came to heal the brokenhearted three things and that i, I draw out of romans chapter 8 that i believe will help you number one 
know that you are not condemned in Christ. If you come to Jesus and you're in him, the Bible says there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've been. He does not condemn you. You come to him and he forgives you of everything. And that's he, now he's not dealing with you in judgment and condemnation. Now he's going to deal with you in forgiveness and, and, and as a father uh, or a parent wanting to help you and and to lift you up and to raise you so really recognize that he does not condemn you number two repent of your old ways uh, just really recognize that uh, being going back to the old ways the Bible says is like the dog going back to its vomit and and God has something better for you so Repent of those old ways and, and begin asking God to not only forgive you, but just to really help you find his ways, his new ways. And, uh, and so repent of them. Jesus said to the woman that was caught in adultery, neither do I condemn you. But go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. You know, when we add wrong to wrong, the consequences get bigger. And so the more we add wrong to wrong, the bigger the consequences are. And, and God wants to help you not experience all those consequences. And so he wants to guide you in the path that you should go. What you couldn't do in the flesh, you can now do in the spirit. When you come to Christ, He puts His Spirit in you. And if you'll stay full of the Spirit, the Spirit will lead you into the right things and He will give you the energy and the power that you need to obey God. And He puts a new nature in you, which is a God nature. And as you really stay full of the Spirit, you'll find yourself going in that direction. And then finally, replace sin with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Instead of thinking the old way, fill your mind with God's Word. Fill your mind with, uh, with preaching and fill your mind with reading the Scriptures and memorizing the Scriptures and prayer and fellowship and attending worship services and, and being a part of what God wants and stay full of the Spirit and you'll just get so busy doing what God wants you to do you won't have time for the other. And the Bible says those that are spiritually minded filled with the spirit have peace and after all isn't that what we were looking for in all of our sinful ways was peace so just go and be filled with the spirit and let God's peace fill you today and as you do God is going to bless you Lord touch these that have listened today minister to each one your peace Help them be filled with your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Join us again next week.